first elect a party, as you said. There's a national list. It's not regional, as you mentioned. Uh, once the votes are calculated, uh, it's going to be divided up proportionally. There are 120 seats in the Knesset. And in order to get in to the Knesset to begin with, you have to win 3.25% of the overall vote, which is about four seats. Uh, any party that does not cross that threshold is out of the Knesset. Any votes they got are wasted votes, essentially. No one represents them from those parties in the Knesset. Anyone who crossed 3.25%, at that point, it'll be divided up based on the percentages that, that they received. So as an example, if one party wins a quarter of the votes, they will have 30 seats uh, in the Knesset. So it's voting for parties. That's all we're doing today and tonight. Uh, there's no one going to the polls and voting for a prime minister. All we're going to have at the end of this process is a first stage, which is 120 members of parliament. Blue and white, more than anything else, is an opportunity that many see to try to topple Netanyahu. Because of Netanyahu's popularity, because of his strength, because of most of many Israelis seeing him as the only one who can defend Israel and certainly speak well for Israel abroad, this was an opportunity of a few different pop, pop parties coming together and saying, maybe we have a chance. They failed in April. It's going to be very difficult for them to do well, it here. What's fascinating, we're talking about President Trump, to bring it back to the elections for a moment, uh, how various parties all over the spectrum have used the situation with President Trump for their electioneering. So, for example, on the far right, they're saying we're in trouble because Prime Minister Netanyahu is so close to Trump that perhaps there's going to be some deal forced on us which is not good for Israel from the right. You obviously have the Likud saying, look how well Prime Minister Netanyahu has developed this relationship with Trump and look how much has been accomplished. You have center-left saying the Prime Minister has become too close to Trump. We're losing the Democratic Party. We're losing the left in the United States. And every one of them have managed to bring that relationship into these elections and each one of them to serve their interests wherever they are on the political spectrum. Just if I, looking at our discussion right now, we've been talking for about 45 minutes about security, which means, and I do to his credit, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, who certainly has secured Israel and certainly is very capable when it comes to security issues, he has uh, successfully, and the, the discussion is about who is the best for security, and that always brings it back towards Netanyahu. We're not sitting here analyzing who's going to be best for the economy, who's going to be best for religion and state, who's going to be best for all the other issues, environmental issues. I've been getting lists of people asking me questions here about who's the best candidate for those issues. Israel, when it comes down to it, both the people and the leadership, the issues that we're talking about are security, 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 and that tends to play into the hands of someone who has done a very good job but when it comes to security. I would go all the exit polls, I know that from when we were, when I was involved in the political world, uh, we do a significant exit polling. It shows that when people go to vote, when it's all said and done after all the commercials and all the cute ads and everything else, security is high number one, economy is below it but significantly, and religion and state is a far number three. So when people go to actually vote, what they cast their vote for, mm -hmm. he knows that, and that's why he uses mm -hmm. it to his credit. Mm -hmm. and I Israeli law does allow the Prime Minister to continue serving under these conditions. What Blue and White has tried to do, they've tried to do, is to uh, bring the issue to the fore as much as possible and to raise questions about the legitimacy of the Prime Minister continuing to serve. And that is the battle that we have between the two. That's why they've tried to say, we're clean. We don't have any scandals. We don't have any issues to worry about. I'm going to be honest with you, after watching this from the side for the last year, uh, it really hasn't caught on uh, in the Israeli public. I Those who are right-wing and support Netanyahu are sticking with him despite the scandals. Those who are center-left and against Netanyahu will obviously raise the issue of the scandals, but it's not something which has become an issue which has been strong enough yeah. to topple Netanyahu. And the other storyline we have to be watching yeah. is, the, uh, is, first of all, the ultra-Orthodox parties, oh. because <laughs> with all the attacks that have been happening <laughs> against them, both from Lieberman and from Yair Lapid, and the religion and state issues coming to the fore, they are working. I'm watching scenes right now here on my phone of them going door to door in ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods, making sure that people have gone out to vote, and the percentages are extremely high, over 80% already in many of the areas. You might see them surge as a result, and all of a sudden we could turn around and Netanyahu Yahu, just by the power of the ultra-Orthodox and the power of Otsma, all of a sudden, there's 61 61. that are there.
there, right. and, uh, and that's end game right there. Uh, the other possibility is we're at a stalemate, and the big question is, can Benny Gantz possibly cobble together a coalition if either Labour or Democratic Union don't get in? the numbers just don't add up in terms of any possibility. So these issues of which parties cross the threshold and what happens in the ultra-Orthodox, we've been talking all night about Likud and Blue and White, as we should, but those storylines are very significant over the next uh, 40 so. minutes or so. Ayman Uda, a member of Knesset, the leader of the Joint Arab List, uh, he did a massive interview with one of Israel's uh, primary newspapers where he seemed to be doing something revolutionary by saying, I would be willing to join an Israeli government if. And here's what's interesting. You go down his list of issues. The top 10, I think anybody on either side, Netanyahu or Benny Gantz, would have no problem. We have to fight crime in the Arab areas. We have to make sure that they have better universities. We have to make sure that there's a hospital. Things that are very legitimate and what Arab members of Knesset should be fighting for, for the 20% Arab minority in Israel. But you get to the bottom of the list and he says, and a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem's capital and Temple Mount in Palestinian hands. And when he says that last little in the small little print, there it goes. Uh, put aside Netanyahu, Benny Gantz would not sign off on that. No, the Labor no. Party at this point in Israel would no. not sign off on that. So uh, there's a lot of talk, and I think it's positive, that the Arab population should have representation for their needs in Israel, in the Knesset. But the moment it starts becoming nationalistic and becomes for the mouthpiece for the Palestinian Authority, at that point it becomes a, a non-starter, not just for Likud, but even for the center-left. We all thought, we started this broadcast by saying people are frustrated, they're upset, and everyone expected low turnout. And I'm looking at these numbers, 63.7% as of 8 p.m. Just by contrast, in the 2001 elections, which were big, big elections, right against left, and everyone at this point in time, it was 58.2%. 2006, when you had uh, Eud Olmert and, and Kadima coming to power, it was just 57% at this point. And onwards and onwards, and this is a high since 1999. The ultra-Orthodox parties, there are areas where they're polling over 80% are showing up to vote. Voter turnout is a major part of the story. Moshe Feigman Zehut, uh, which was a pretty significant player in the last election, they're now part of uh, Likud, Likud as well. So I think the trend is good to have the smaller parties going towards the, the larger parties. That's very positive. I know all the party leaders say we're not going to see what happened last time, which was victory announcements by either. Yeah, Netanyahu or Gans tonight. Uh, those will be reserved for sometime tomorrow afternoon because no one wants to fall prey to what happened well, last time. We're starting to get leaks from the uh, polls that we'll hear in a few minutes. Uh, the Channel 12 poll of Manu Geva says there's no majority for either bloc according to their exit polls. So at least one of the exit polls is not going to get Netanyahu to the magic number of 61, and we're going to have to see what happens afterwards. Right now. To remember all the proclamations beforehand, I will oh. sit with this person, I will with that person. The moment we have the results after we announce them, all of that is off the table, off the and table. all kinds of people can end up serving with other people they never said before. Just Benny Gantz as an example, an opportunity to be Minister of Defense, raise his, port, uh, his, his where he is in the political world, all kinds of things can happen. So even if we don't see 61, and it doesn't mean that all the statements that have made beforehand won't be broken in order to get someone to the 61. We have a unity government. Uh, the terms would be such where I think both parties involved want to find a way to make this last. If if Gantz, in theory, joins together with Likud, it's because he wants to be able to build himself in that scenario. It's not to all of a sudden pull out and topple it. Uh, so that is a goal which both sides, is in both sides' interest and the country's interest for something like that to happen instead of a narrow right-wing government. It's just a question of will people be able to swallow what they've promised beforehand and actually join together uh, for the better good of but the country. If I can uh, see what we're seeing right now, um, it's pretty clear that everything we've been talking about tonight about someone getting to 61 uh, is, is very far from that. From all so either way, though, we're not going to walk away tonight with anyone with a clear path uh, to 61. And now the process of the president meeting with all the parties is going to begin. Who they recommend, neither will be 61. And now the president of Israel will have in his hands to decide who sh will he give the mandate to form a government? And it's not obvious from everything we're seeing here that that person will for sure be Netanyahu. It's going to be an amazing few days ahead of us. So it's Amazing process. I had the uh, honor of sitting in the room in 2015 uh, as the president met with the parties. He talks to them about their ideologies. He talks to them about their, their goals. And then he says, bottom line, who do you support for prime minister? And according to these numbers, 57 
will say Netanyahu. You will not have, though, 55 or 54 for Gantz, because the Arab, Arab parties are not going to be saying Benny Gantz. So Benny Gantz is going to be in the 40s, 40, 40, according 40, 40, to this, 45. in the 40s. So then you say to yourself, if Rivlin has to choose who has the best chance, uh, to be honest, as an outsider watching in, how can he not say at that point Netanyahu and give it to him at the 50, on the high 50s? And the question is going to be, who will Netanyahu succeed in peeling off? I will be fascinated to see, but there's no clear path for anyone at the moment. Now we uh, which is quite amazing to see you come to the end of a whole election campaign. Again, we don't have the final numbers yet, but no again. one is able to say uh, we are victorious. They all say we did great. No one seems to have surged. So uh, the president at that point should, would make the calculation, and his mandate is to give it to any of the 120 members of Knesset who he believes has the best chance to form a government. That's what his mandate's going to be. He's going to get recommendations, according to these numbers, in the high 50s for one member of Knesset named Benjamin Netanyahu. He's going to get somewhere in the 40s for member of Knesset Benny Gantz. And he's going to have a Victor Lieberman saying, I'm not naming anybody in particular. I'm naming whoever will bring a unity government of Likud, blue and white, and my party, uh, together, that's who I would recommend for prime minister. And for the first time in a very long time, uh, the president is going to play a major, major role in all of this. There are many people who are even saying the president might not jump right away and say, I'm naming this one or that one. But as many on the panel have mentioned, he might call Netanyahu and Gantz into a room yeah. and try to work some kind of a plan towards formulating government, give one of them the mandate, but with some kind of a course ahead of him. Because otherwise, he's going to give one of them 28 days, nothing will happen won't go to new elections, he'll give it to the other one to try to do it, he won't succeed. So to have the country go through months and months of no prime minister, of no government, he'd rather cut it off at the past now and try to figure out a way to force unity on everyone involved. And you I mentioned one thing because as I travel in America mm. especially, I'm asked repeatedly about the Kahanists who are taking over Israeli yeah, yeah. politics and what has happened to Israel that such extreme right-wing racists are coming in. It's clear from all three polls, and I'm seeing the actual numbers, uh, Otsma is far below the threshold, uh, and those who are concerned about what's happening in Israeli politics, how has it gone so far right, it's been proven once again that that's not where Israel is. Even if Israel has certainly turned to the right over the last decades, it's a right that is not in any way, uh, it's not racist, it's not anti-Arab and all these other extreme yeah. terminologies, uh, that does not really have a place in Israeli politics. And the voters, who are the ones who choose to choose that, have shown that that's not the case. Uh, to, to justify, blue and white will say, at this point it's our turn to form a government, right. and the president will have to decide. But because their block is so far below, uh, in terms of the numbers in the 40s, it's very difficult for the president uh, to actually justify giving it to blue and white. I will tell you, I'm seeing the blue and white uh, talking points right now. What they're saying is, Netanyahu has failed. That is their talking point right now. Netanyahu failed in April, Netanyahu has failed now, and therefore we should be given at least the chance to try to form a government, and they're saying it's not a given that people who said they wouldn't sit with us won't sit with us, and therefore they're asking for that opportunity. That's amazing. There is one campaign headquarters where there is massive celebration. I'm watching it on my phone, yeah, Arab, and that is in yeah. Shas. Right. They have brought really? themselves up to up. nine seats, yeah. according to two of the polls, and the night of Judaism is happy as well. The hall, I, I can tell every, I wrote a piece for JNS about this a few weeks ago. Uh, the anti-religious campaigns Works have brought fail. people yeah. who are not planning on voting for the Haredi parties. Haredim who are moderate, who have gone to work, some who have gone to the army. They felt we're all under attack over here, yeah. and we all yeah. have to come out. And that has now given the Haredim 17 seats, major players beyond what we would have thought they would be, and they're the ones who are celebrating. Sh it. Sh thing is, Good. the Haredim had been saying all along that they would be willing to sit with Gantz without Lapid. Without Lapid. But then in the last few weeks, all of a sudden, Benny Gantz went on this campaign about, we're going to form a secular uh, Israel, right. and that right. pushed the Haredim even further. Yeah. Uh, again, I think they'll be able to swallow that, and they'll find a way to make yeah, peace with I him. Uh, I do agree they would not sit in a government together uh, if it's including Yair Lapid. And... Uh, 
everyone is actually walking around in a in a in a sort of daze in a daze of what is going to happen. This is unprecedented. Uh, you're having little claps here or there. They're trying to chant "BB go home" and things like that in various party headquarters. Uh, but no one, uh, no one is celebrating in the major parties. Uh, and and uh, even Labor Party, the great Labor Party, has fallen to five merits with this whole joining together at five, and, and no one can celebrate except for the Haredim. Haredim. <laughs> We're seeing five, five interesting points, and this builds off the quote that, that we got from Yaakov. Netanyahu's first call, within minutes after the results, was to the Haredim to make sure that they are going to be together with him. Tzachi Hanegbi from the Likud party, a minister, came out and said the exit polls are wrong and we're waiting for the final results. Likud ministers all across the board are saying no one should think for a moment that we're going to push out Netanyahu. We're going to support him all the way till the end and he's going to be the one that we want for prime minister. Moshe Gafni from the Haredi parties came out with a big statement of Nitzachnu. We won. Uh, and here's the key point. Ayman Uda from the Joint Arab List has said that he is strongly considering going to the president and recommending Benny Gantz for Prime Minister, which will now all of a sudden oh. put the, prime, the President in a place where he might have high 50s for both possibilities and might actually arm him to go to Benny Gantz first. And Ayman Uda is certainly thinking that in his mind. Uh, recommend Gantz, why not? I don't know if the government will work out, but let's try to give the President more to rest upon to give the center-left the chance to try to form well, the government. Well, if you saw, Dub, in your experience, if the, if the Arab party is down poll, uh, exit mm -hmm. polling at 10, 11, or 12, recommend guns with no intention of joining the coalition does that, that still counts a hundred percent in terms of the president's um uh, consideration is that, that true? And that's the key point here remember in the last time around lieberman went into the president's house that's right. and recommended netanyahu giving netanyahu the 65 from 60 to 65 and then the prime the president said okay he has the clear 61 and then lieberman did not join with that government <laughs> so exactly. ivan uda can 100 percent go to the president's <laughs> the residence thing. and the president's residence and say i see Gantz as the best one but then when it comes to the negotiations there's no it doesn't work out but Gantz in the meantime can he be part that. of that uh the, the have the mandate to try to actually bring other parties involved and once that process starts, we have to remember, the same way anyone might cross over and join Netanyahu, don't be surprised when people start crossing over and joining with guns. I, I was shocked when I saw this in the Knesset. Behind the scenes, yeah. in the Knesset, there was tremendous camaraderie and even personal friendships yeah. between those who are an ideological divide. For example, the greatest friendship I saw when I was in the Knesset was between a minister who passed away named Uri Arabach, and his best friend was member of Knesset Ilan Gilon from the Meretz Party. Yeah. Right-wing religious, left-wing secular. Today, I posted a picture on Facebook. Out of all the posts about all the politics, this is the one that went viral. It was a picture picture of a polling place where a Likud person was having a difficult oh, yeah. time putting yes. up his canopy and the blue and white and the labor volunteers all yeah, helped him. Right. After it's all said and done, we, we do have unity and we do have a sense of being family. Uh, the election season certainly brings out the worst. And let's remember, the election season is not over right now and we're going to have another few weeks of trying to figure out where this yeah. goes. Mm -hmm. But I think you raise a very good point that you know when people on the outside are watching Israel, it looks like we're so completely polarized. And I think in 71 years, we've done a remarkable job at bringing all these different populations together with all the intense politics and living together here in this country. I